Welcome to training for selling HUD homes. I'm Jan Saharsky from Diversified Real Estate, Dan Kilbay from Sell State Leading Edge. We are neighborhood listing brokers, and part of our job is to give you information and help train you. This is a slide share. If you'd like to see the complete program, you can go to this link and get a PowerPoint. Here are some of the things we'll cover today. Highlights of the change in the m and management. Uh, where HUD properties come from, how you register, the broker registration process, the bidding process, preparing and submitting the contract, and the closing process. The highlights of the changes by HUD is now there are two M&M, which is marketing and management firms. One is Ofori REO, which is the one Dan and I work for, and the other one is Cityside. They're responsible for pricing and marketing of the properties. They contract with neighborhood listing brokers uh, who put the property on the market and ensure customer service and satisfaction. The neighborhood listing brokers, also referred to as NLB, this replaces what used to be called the broad listing broker. And our job as a neighborhood listing broker is to inspect the property for any repair items, to give an initial BPO or broker price opinion, and ensure access for showings. Here are some myths about HUD homes. They're not low-end housing. They're available in a variety of neighborhoods and price ranges. Uh, the myth that they're not good investments, they're offered at fair market value. That HUD will pay to remodel your home? No, they are sold as is. So every HUD home is sold as is. They will not do any repairs, nor will they allow you to do any. The mission of HUD is to increase home ownership, support community development, increase access to affordable housing, free from discrimination. Showing HUD homes. Any licensed agent can show a HUD home. We ask that you sign in when you show the property, make sure that it's securely locked when you leave, and not remove any signs or lock boxes or keys. Many people don't know that you can advertise HUD homes, even though it's not your listing. So when you do that, you have to use the Equal Housing logo. You can hold open houses. You have to make sure that your advertised price matches the HUD home store price. And promote them as HUD owned. Don't imply that it's your exclusive listing, but you can do the wording in the ad that will work for that and do not place a sign on the property or yard. The exception would be if you're doing an open house the day of the open house, you can certainly put a sign on the property. So if you're going to run an open house, you just let Dan or I know, and we're gonna say yes. So how do you get started? First of all, your broker has to have an NAID, which is a name, address, identifier number. And if they're not, they go in to register on the website then after that, you can create your own account so you don't have to wait for the broker to submit your bids. Here's the website, and you can see at the top right is a place where you log in or register. Oh, <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing it for me, it works for me, sorry. Okay, so this is where you log in or register. You can search for the properties. We often do it by county and it gives you your list. Here's information on the type of listing period, the price, whether there have been reductions, the opening date for bids, and we'll talk more about the bid periods in a bit. Here is the screen showing a property. And this property, this is a property information, and there are a number of other tabs here. So you wanna go to each tab on the, on the listing, this one is the addendums. So this is environmental information, property condition, lead-based paint. This is all the information that HUD is telling about the property. This is your map. So you can find out where the property is, right there on HUD Home Store. And if you want to know who has it, this is one of Dan's. So he's the listing agent. This is an O4 management company. 
And this is the company that comes in to do repairs. So if someone stole the copper or if there were a problem, they're the company that would come in to take care of things. So who are the HUD home buyers? We have owner occupants. Okay. And owner occupants have priority during certain bid periods. They're required to occupy the property for one year. They cannot purchase another HUD property for two years. And they cannot have purchased a property, a HUD owned home, within the past two years to qualify as an owner occupant purchaser. So they, we're going to talk more about bid periods, but owner occupant have priority in, in most of the bid periods. Investors are allowed to bid in the extended period. There's no restriction. They can purchase as many as they want. There are government agencies, and if there's a government agency or a nonprofit, they have to go in and register for their own NEID number in order to bid. The Good Neighbor Next Door program, which we talk a little bit more later on, that's a program offered for firefighters, EMTs, police officers, teachers, and there's a significant discount for purchasing, and this is in revitalization areas. The Good Neighbor Next Door program, it's a 50% discount off the price. So they, act, they have to live in the property for a minimum of three years, work in the same area where it's located, and it has to be in a revitalization area. HUD chooses the Good Neighbor Next Door program. So you will see right on the website whether the property qualifies for Good Neighbor Next Door. When you bid on these, is that going to be my screen? Yes. You bid 100% of the list price even though you're going to have the 50% discount. They can use any sort of financing. And then that 50% is kind of a silent second that if they need all the qualifications, eventually it gets forgiven. But they have to qualify for the 100%. HUD will not pay closing costs on this program. So if you're doing this and you want to submit a bid, you would have to make your arrangements with them as a buyer to be paid. Same thing about commissions. Oh, yes, commissions. That's really what I meant when I said closing costs. You're correct. They will not pay closing costs. Thank you, Dan. And they will not pay your commission. So you need to make your own arrangements for that in this, if you are submitting a bid. Here are some of the revitalization areas. But again, you're going to see this on the HUD listing, whether or not they are within the revitalization area. So when can the buyer submit the offer? Well, that depends on the condition and the location. The condition determines the listing codes. And the codes are IN, which is insurable, IE, insurable with escrow, and UI, which is uninsured. And that's based on the condition of the property. So, insurable. It means this beats the minimum 203B requirements to get an FHA loan. So if it's insurable, you can get a regular FHA loan. If it's insurable with escrow, it means there are some repairs, but they're less than $5,000. So in that case, the buyer could get an FHA loan, but they have to escrow that extra money, which will take care of the repairs. It's not going to be a gift from HUD. It's something that the buyer has to have at closing. Uninsurable, it means it does not meet the property standards for an FHA, and this will be in your reports, because they've determined the repairs are over $5,000. So this would be like a 203, FHA 203K, or cash, or some sort of rehab financing. So insurable with escrow, again to recap, only applies when the FHA and the, the repairs are less than $5,000. HUD will not pay that. That's not a gift from HUD. And there are no repairs ever to be made before closing, even if it's something as simple as fixing a pipe so that you can turn the water on. HUD will not approve that. Buyer has to come up with this amount above the purchase price. 
So at the, close, at the listing, you'll see the itemized repairs plus the 10%, and that is the money that they need to come up with. They bring it to closing, it gets put in an escrow account, and then it's used for the repairs, which must be done within 90 days by a licensed contract. If all the money isn't used, then it goes to pay down the principal. If it's uninsurable, their repair is in excess of $5,000, you can do a 203K. Does not require that you use an FHA. In any of these, you can use different financing. So, here we have a case number. And it shows here, this is insured with escrow. And the repair escrow is 3,200. And if you wanted to know what those repairs are, you review the PRC, which is in the addendum tab. Questions at this point? Okay. I have a question. So on the insurable with escrow, they still have to meet, the work has to be done after the closing. Mm -hmm. So the loan they're going for, if their appraiser comes back and says it needs this, this, and this, HUD is not going to make any repairs Correct. at all. Right. Yeah, HUD won't do any repairs. They're not in the business of fixing houses. They're just in the business of okay. selling them. They don't want to do any repairs. That's kind of one of the things we usually stress that most, it's kind of nice working with a buyer. When you go in the door, you know that no matter what you find, they're not going to fix it. Generally. And even if it's a health issue or safety issue, which a lot of other REOs will fix, like radon or no, lead. No, they won't do it. Nothing. nothing. Okay. Yeah, it's very uncommon they'll do anything. Uh, HUD and Fannie Mae, are they similar? Separate. There's very separate Fannie Mae will do repairs before it goes on the market or something like that. They will do repairs as a concession or a negotiation. HUD generally will not do anything about that. Okay. All right. So listing code determines what listing period they'll use. And these do get somewhat confusing to keep track of. The best thing to do is keep track of the HUD Home Store website. Uh, if you've got a property that somebody's interested in, particularly you usually get calls about investors who want to buy a property that is only in the exclusive period for owner, owner occupants, and the agents will call and ask, when can my investor bid? General guidelines will give you, but these do move around a little bit. Best thing is keep an eye on the site because it will show you, and I can show you another screen, it'll tell you exactly when uh, the bid period will end. So the listing codes, insurable, insurable with escrow, and uninsured will determine whether they do, whether they do a combination of exclusive, extended, uh, and lottery periods. So insurable, insurable with escrow, again, these are FHA ready, essentially, houses. Um, exclusive listing period first, that's a 30-day period. If they don't sell in that 30-day period, then they do what they call the extended listing period. And I'll get into more of the details of that. Exclusive period, the first 10 days. Oh. Just like HUD has been doing it for a long time, the first 10 days they put a property on the market, they, they effectively it's a sealed bid period. Any bids that come in, they just hold on to them, sit in, and wait. And they don't really concern themselves much about if yours came in on Thursday and somebody else comes in four days later, they look at all the bids on the 11th day, essentially. They'll look at the bids. If they've got something that's acceptable, they'll accept it. Properties under contract move forward. Uh, if there are two that are identical, they would use date stamping and take the earlier bid first. Um, but if they don't get any bids through that uh, first 10 day period, it goes into the daily bid review time frame. The next 19 days, essentially every day, they'll look at it in the morning, they'll look and see if they have any offers on the property. If an offer is acceptable, they'll go ahead and accept it at that time. So then if you, if you have a buyer at that point, you're putting a bid in on the 20th day, the 21st day, they're gonna look at your bid and review it. And if it's acceptable, it's under contract. If they cannot get the property sold in those 30 days, it goes into an extended bid period. Day 31, that's where investors come into to play. So all these before, generally it's governments approved, nonprofits, owner occupants, investors would show up on extended, uh, extended period, day 31. And again, these are insured, insured with escrow type properties. The house is uninsurable, listed under the lottery period. It's not a lottery like we, we normally think of as a lottery. Seven day period is a five day sealed bid period and they're just putting it out to municipalities and nonprofits. That's if the, the city of Norwich had a housing office that was buying properties. They could get them 
get their own name, address, identifier, bid for the, the town, buy it as you know, moderate, low cost income housing, whatever. Nonprofits, they have to be approved by HUD. They would have their own NAID. Uh, Habitat for Humanity, everybody knows is a good nonprofit, but they don't have their own NAID. I'm not sure why. So they could bid in that period. If it doesn't sell within the lottery period, then it goes to exclusive period, which again is a 30 day period, but the first five days are doing a sealed bid daily after that. And then they get into extended period. So essentially 38 days, we might be looking at uh, when the investors can put bids on the property. I think actually that might be exclusive period might be shorter on this this one here. I have trouble keeping track. Yeah, then unfortunately HUD does kind of change the guidelines. Changes. Seven days for a lottery period and then waiting 30 days for an investor when it's very obviously an investor type house, probably a seven days and seven days. So they never counter offer? Oh, they will. Actually, we have received some where you, uh, an agent will put an offer in and um, HUD may reach out to them and say, hey, look, the, the lowest net that we can take is $92,030. So the agent has to look at and talk to their buyer and say, look, we're going to put the commission on top of this and, and figure it out. If you want to make an offer at whatever, 97 or 98,000, it'll be agreeable. So they do counter offer yes. in that respect. But how their counter offer works is they say, this is the minimum acceptable bid. You resubmit that bid. If someone else happens to bid higher, they will take the other bid. But Which if someone yeah. doesn't, then it's a good point. If they, if they had three offers and they were all kind of low and they said, hey, look, we're going to take Ninety-two thousand is our lowest net, and they all figure it out. So okay, ninety, yeah, yeah. ninety-eight thousand, and then three offers mm -hmm. of ninety-eight. Then they're still not going to work. Uh, just to clarify, on all HUDs, you add your, you have to figure your commission in. Or we'll get into the commissions okay. how it works out in a little bit. Yeah, and one of the points we usually make out to people is, if you're working with somebody who wants a house, or particularly if it's a lot of activity, and think it's a very active listing, and it's going to get a lot of activity, don't make offers around numbers. And that just, you know, that's just a uh, counsel to your buyer. If you're, you know, 98,000, make it 98,112. Because somebody else bid a 98 and they got it for $112 more. It's not going to break their bank. And HUD is about what the net return is to them, pure and simple. If it's in a revitalization area, HUD may decide. Now, may decide, that's, that's HUD's decision. I've had a couple buyers who have decided that they fit in the good neighbor next door criteria and they wanted to buy a house from HUD. It doesn't work that way. HUD has to, it has to fit in one of the revitalization areas. And I mean to, I want to email Stephen and ask him what their criteria is, but HUD has to make it available before somebody can buy it that way. Good neighbor next door. Again, it's a lottery period for the first seven days. And that gives a good neighbor next door bidders a chance. After that goes to exclusive, now it just becomes owner occupant, so really a very short window for good neighbor next door properties. We do not know if it's going to be a good neighbor next door until they send us the listing price for it. We get the listings that usually about a two week time frame from when they first assign it to us before it hits the market. If it does not sell in those two periods, then it goes again into the extended period, and that's where investors become can be involved. So submitting an offer. First thing, no local contracts. HUD does not work with the five-page person sale agreements. So you don't need to do that. Contract packages are found in the addendums tab in the property detail sheet. The most important ones are the property condition report. The, there's another one called maintenance, I think maintenance property requirements. That's the one that outlines the insurable of escrow items. Uh, there aren't that many. They do have somewhat of an inspection on the property, which is another nice feature on it. They have a uh, the service company will pressurize the, the plumbing, will try to test the electrical, they may hook it up to a generator if it's not, the electric's not on the street. Um, to give you basics, you might say, oh, it's got pressure. They may say, you know, it would not hold pressure. We know it's got freeze damage. So now you know where you're going with your buyer. If you got somebody who wants to move in ready, you can look at that and say, this is not the one. Contract package filled out entirely before you submit online. This is just good things to cover yourself that you've got assigned contract saying they're offered $98,112. They've signed on it because if they lose a bid for $98,250, they're not, you know, they can be mad, but not mad at you. Earnest money certified funds. I thought I changed the screen. It's not made out to HUD. It's made out to the listing broker, the neighborhood listing broker. That's a change. We'll go over that a, a little bit further on. Uh, Pre-qualification, you should have that in hand. $50,000 and under for a purchase price is $500 for earnest money. If it's 50,001 or over, it's $1,000 for earnest money. Um, HUD doesn't 
need any more money. I have had them accept more than that, but there's real no reason to. Half the list price of properties vacant lot, we've never seen it. So signatures should be in blue ink, black ink as acceptable, is acceptable, and no white outer liquid paper. Just to note on that, I'm doing one right now with City Side and one with O4. And City Side bid acceptance came back saying only blue ink. Yeah, because those are the it two. It used to be that. The M&M &M contractors are managing marketing firms. We work with Ofori. Cityside also handles properties in this area for HUD. They have little different processes. There's no strict guidelines from HUD. So again, um, Cityside saying, I just I just tell people blue ink. Just, blue ink is safer. It's safer. They also will not take a rubber stamp for the broker's signature because I my office tried to do that and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> The contract, because we're kind of going a little quicker time frame, I'm not going to go through every little part of this today. Basically making sure that all these things are filled out you know, on the paperwork that you've got in hand. This is a form 9548, it's called the HUD. I think I have a copy of one here if you not need to see it. It's, a, it's like a three-page contract all together. All the information is on one page that they fill out. The biggest thing is the information of, as far as purchase price, case number, who the buyers are, what they're going to do for the financing, that's the important part if they're doing FHA financing, make sure this item four is filled out completely. If they're doing cash or a different type of uh, financing, they're going to just check this box here. Commissions, you can put down the commissions in there, you don't have to worry about that on your contract truthfully, it's not affecting the bot, well, it's affecting their net, so you probably should calculate that out. The website, when you put in your offer, will automatically calculate it for you. They will do closing costs not to exceed 3% as well. Again, just as long as the buyer understands that if HUD is contributing closing costs, that's reducing their net. So it may, makes their offer less uh, attractive to HUD. This is lower down on the form. Uh, owner occupant or investor checking that off. Closing timeframes, Ofori does 45 days for owner occupants, 30 days for investors. That's just always our guideline. Bigger change, which happened back in, I think August was it last year, um, what they call a buyer select closing agent program. We'll cover that in a little bit. But it now is a buyer selected attorney who is handling the closing rather than HUD's attorney. Um, filling out all the information, purchaser names, signatures. Important that you have the purchaser's social security numbers correct. Uh, Jan has run into it before where you just, you know, you transpose a number or something like that. HUD does cross check these things, I guess, like against IRS records. And if it comes up wrong, then it's not an acceptable contract. Making sure that uh, the buyer signs this is really kind of critical at this point if you're making an offer. You do not need to have your broker, in my opinion, the broker wouldn't have to sign this because it's not an accepted offer at this point. You mentioned initials and mistakes. Initials are commonly missed up in here in this uh, item number 12. About basically that says that they can. They make a decision. This is this is a little different than our standard local contract. If the deal falls apart, HUD can make a decision saying, you know what, you didn't tell us about the, you didn't get your mortgage, and we're keeping your earnest money. They send me an earnest, uh, an email that says send us the money, and the buyer's already initial saying HUD can do that. So it, it's it speeds that process along, if nothing else. The most common contract errors that they see. Earnest money held by, again, it's the correct entry is a neighborhood listing broker. So if it's going to be, it's going to leading edge, it's going to diversified real estate, whoever the listing broker is. Um, the correct amount. Line four type of financing, check the box. If it's if it's FHA, you gotta fill out all the details. Uh, 203B, which is FHA, is not accepted if the property is listed as uninsured, obviously. Closing time frames, 45 days for all owner occupants, 30 days for investors. I'm not sure what city side does. Same it's thing. Probably same thing? Okay. Same thing. All right. Line 11, this is regarding to addenda. Basically, the one says, you know, check off if the uh, there's a lead-based paint addendum attached, and then it says is or is not, other addendum or is or are, are not attached. There's always more addendums, so make sure that that box is always checked as yes. <coughs> and let me see if I can back up if I can. Yeah, this here, number 11, lead-based paint addendum is or is not attached, depending on the age. Other addendum, this should always be checked as is. There's always more addendums. And all purchase initials must be on the contract. Big point again that Jan made earlier, no repairs before closing. We inspect the properties regularly. We have tasks that we have to go out and check it, and uh, the HUD is not 
you know, very, uh, very happy when we find out that somebody's in there ripping out walls, starting repairs before they own the house. It's a big liability issue for HUD, obviously. So submitting an offer, you go onto the HUDHomestore.com website, log in as a bidder, find the property and click on submit an offer. Now obviously you're gonna go ahead and select as NAID as a selling broker. I think the drop down also shows nonprofit and municipalities. The NAID for your office and your real estate license information there. You type in the little CAPTCHA on the bottom and hit the verify NAID. We might start seeing, I haven't heard any this year, but sometimes if you get to this point and you click on verify, it kicks you back to the front screen of HUD Home Store. It's not real obvious, but there's a little red message that pops up that your license information is incorrect. Because your profile, you have to update as an agent in what, June, is it June 1st? June 1st, your license renews and people forget to update on the, the thing. So just simply kicks you out. Go back into your, uh, log into your account, change your license information saying you're expiring in 2015, you'll be all set. So you get through this part, it's gonna bring up the cut, the case number, and obviously it's got some radio or bullets that you can check off as far as what they're doing for financing, dollar amount, things like that. It's got the list price up there. What you're going to do is this one is 63,000, the offer is 60,000. You go on to the next tab, it automatically calculates out the commissions. Uh, they, they still call it broad listing broker, which now they refer to as neighborhood listing brokers. That's the listing agent side. You can't change this one. You can change this dollar here. So if it's a very active property, seems like a lot of interest, it's a family member, you really want to be at the house, you can reduce your commission on 6A. And that makes, that will change the net to HUD, and that's their criteria. So it'll make your offer look a little better. If you're going to fill out, obviously, if they're a, uh, owner occupant on the bottom. This is one screen for the, the offer, that's all you need. Important, make sure you get the social security number or the tax number correct, because they will check that. Your information will automatically populate since you're logged in as yourself. Once you've got the information, again, it's very basic information, doesn't have any check boxes for attachments or signatures, it's just a filling out the quick data to send to HUD. On the bottom, you have to check the box saying you're agreeing to the terms and condition and click on confirm this bid. You'll get to this one, this is your bid is complete. You get a little message, successfully committed, uh, submitted rather. Good recommendation, print out the bid acknowledgement page. And there's two little links up there, bid acknowledgement, sales contract. Uh, you can also print out the sales contract. I, I much prefer printing it out right there. Everything you just put in there, will type it out very nice and clean. My handwriting is not the greatest. Uh, we get a lot of very illegible contracts. This is nice and clean. If they accept your buyer's offer, you just have to get to them, get the signatures, initials, and move on. Questions on that? Okay. Offer acceptance, again, bid deadline day. They'll, they'll review the offers, accept, reject, or maybe counter offer. They do it all through email. Uh, we don't, as li listing brokers, we do not know anything about the offers going on on a property. So agents sometimes will email us and say, do you have any offers on this property? That's like, we have no idea. On HUD properties, we do not know. The only time we get notification is when it's under contract. So if they email you with a counter offer, we don't know about that. Um, I get an email saying, yes, congratulations. You know, Sylvia, your offer was accepted. It's my listing, I get a CC. Um, so all the contract paperwork is done through the, you as a selling agent with O4 email, keep an eye on the spam folders. If you need to make a change, you can get in touch with a contact at O4 or Cityside and let them know. You know, you put it in as a buyer name, but he decides he's doing it as an investment property, buying his LLC, change of names, check with HUD. I just did that in my office. They just kicked out the offer from the investor. He resubmitted as the his LLC. They accepted the offer, but you have to go through that process. Depends on what it is, adding a name. Check Changing with financing. Yeah, check with O4, check with city side, see how they want to handle it. Cancellation forms on the websites as well. This is a, a screen capture. Um, property got accepted as one of my listings, one of my agents if I grab this one. O4 does this, which is a very nice program. They'll send it out and say, here's what they call the sales contract uh, online verification tool. You click on this link, you've got your confirmation number, your uh, bid amount, your, your data as far as logging in, 
the site will tell you exactly what forms you need. Say, okay, you're doing for a, an owner occupant, you're doing FHA fines, so you need this form, this form, this form. It's a pre-78 house, it's gonna tell you you need lead-based paint. It'll print out all the forms for you, so it's very handy. City side doesn't do that. I no, checked no. out one the other day, they basically say, well, that 04 did the same thing before. Yeah. They would just send you an email saying, I need all these forms. Mm -hmm. And the agents would forget four of them, so. Mm -hmm. This is a little better way to go. Accepted contract package must be in your hands within 48 hours. They like to move these things along quickly. They are not super sticklers on 48 hours. It's very difficult to do. Um, because what the process now is, if you get an offer accepted on one of my listings, you have to get the contract package to my office and I have to overnight it to Ofori. It's very difficult to get done within 48 hours. But the biggest thing is making sure that Ofori knows you're working on it. If you, you call and say, like, my broker's out of town for two days, I can't get a signature, okay, that's, now we know why, okay, I understand that, you know, moving forward. So the forward broker today. actually has to sign it, not the agent. Yes, they, they've been more finicky on the, the broker signing on the accepted yeah. 9548 contract, some of the other paperwork. Most of it says selling broker, or yeah, selling broker. It does broker. say selling broker, but I don't think they necessarily mean it. I have, I I've had more and more of them get kicked back to say they want me yeah. to sign, not the agent. I just sign them. Let's okay, see, but yeah. Time, okay. So the buyer's like closing agent program, this was, okay. Um, yeah. This started July of last year. Now everything is sent to the neighborhood listing broker. So you would bring a completed contract package along with the earnest money to my office, if it's mine, to Jan's office, whatever. Uh, the neighborhood listing broker is going to review it for completeness. If there's anything I can get you to sign that you may have not signed at the office, things like that, I'll get it done then. But pretty much I'm ex receiving the earnest money, taking your contract package, making a copy for my files, and and FedExing it to a forward. And the earnest money has to be certified. Earnest money has to be bank or certified checks. Matter of fact, I had to do one the other day where an investor who I know, he did it with an IRS or a self-directed IRA. He had a right to check himself because his accountant and his attorney tell him that. Before I would not accept it, I said, look, I'll personally vouch that it's a good check, but I had to go write a check for myself to go to the bank to get a certified bank check to myself to go back in the account to show that I had certified funds. So, they're, they're very finicky on that, I will tell you that. And we'll take care of sending it off to a 40. Buyers select closing agent, the buyer's attorney is the one who's going to handle the closing. HUD just uses a title company. The buyer's attorney is in touch with the title company for HUD. They handle the whole process. So, the buyer has their own choice for attorney. If the attorney has done a closing before for HUD, they'll have probably what they call a buyer select you know number. If they don't, this is what you need. You fill out the, the buyer select closing agent form, attorney according to the title company. If they have a done it, close the HUD transaction, they may have a buyer select ID number. Uh, put that on the form. If not, they'll be assigned one. And if they have not done it before, then a selling agent, you'll need to get from the attorney proof of their E&O insurance, the law firm's E&O insurance, uh, a copy of their juris number, and provide that to the neighborhood listing broker along with the form for the copies along and before he assigns them this buyer select closing agent ID number. It sounds very convoluted, but it's really not that bad. So property under contract, if it's an FHA financing, the appraisal on hand for the property will be used. I mean, their, their FHA is HUD, so they have an appraiser goes out to the property, appraise it, and says it's worth 70,000, that's what it goes on the market for. The buyer comes along using FHA, that's the appraiser they're gonna use. They don't have to pay for another appraisal. Even if it's longer than six months? If it's longer than six months, they probably will have to get another one done, yes. But most of the time, it falls within the guidelines that they can still use you know, the original appraisal. Lender would get in touch with the asset manager to obtain the appraisal. We can't get it, the lender gets it. Cannot use a second appraisal. Obviously, if it's longer than six months, they'd probably have to do one. Um, but buyer will be bringing cash to closing if offer is over the asking price. Because it was a busy property, FHA, the appraiser says we're 70, your buyer is offering 73, well, so you're paying more than FHA thinks it's worth, so $3,000 in cash is what your buyer would have to come up with. And that's depending on FHA financing. Um, if it's FHA with a repair escrow, insured with escrow, the buyer has to provide that money at the closing table. And it may require some uh, submission of proof of funds for that money. Home inspections, obviously HUD does highly recommend that buyer do home inspections. 
they have a form that the buyer would have to initial saying they're choosing to or not to do the inspections. Have 15 days to do the uh, inspections. The biggest thing on this one is again, the selling agent, you as a selling agent are the one who's coordinating on all this stuff. We're not involved with contacting the field services company to get the property dewinterized for inspections. That's up to the buyer and you as a selling agent. To coordinate with the field service company, they will send you a form saying, you want this property dewinterized, you have to send them a check with $160 for dewinterizing. I think one of the companies now, Cityside, may say, use your own plumber to dewinterize for inspections, but you'll write us a check for $150 because we're going to have our field services rewinterize after you're done. The instructions come out in the emails, you follow the instructions. But again, selling agents and company, the buyers, inspections, appraisers, et cetera, to the properties. You're not allowed to give out lockbox codes. They don't want buyers having con uh, access to the HUD keys. So is the asset management company turning on the utilities? The field service company is turning on the utilities. Okay, so well, actually, no. The electrical, the buyer would actually turn on the electrical. In, their name. in, their, in name. their name. So they're yeah. paying to have the utilities yeah. go on and off. Correct. Uh, uh, some, of the, some of the properties will have power on if they have a sump pump. That's usually the only reason we see power on the HUD property. Otherwise, your buyer would turn it on for the inspections. Contract extensions, these are handled through the attorney, sending it off to HUD, asking for them. They're done in the 15-day increments. Uh, price breakdowns as far as how much per day. Typically, what O4 has been doing is of late because they know there's you know, slower time frames for getting approvals on FHA loans, things like that. They uh, Most, I won't say it as a rule, but they almost always waive the first period. They'll, Extended for two weeks, yeah, but that will waive the fee. Any anyway, unused amount gets prorated, I mean, sorry, yeah, prorated back to the buyer, refunded in escrow. Um, again, the attorney sends that into a Ford. Forfeiture of earnest money is a possibility. It's not real common as long as, particularly if you've got a buyer who's using financing, as long as they prove that they could not get financing because it was a condition of the property or they lost their job or something like that. HUD's not in the business of trying to take people's money. They're just trying to move the houses. But if the buyer does not respond, I have the buyer who's trying to do financing on a property which didn't have an oil tank, couldn't turn on the heat. He could have easily gotten a denial because he couldn't turn on the heat and said he lost $1,000 because he just didn't provide the paperwork. Investors, same thing, they can lose 100%. Most investors are just doing cash, so they're, they're risking a little bit more, but typically just capping at $1,000. Um, if no documentation, again, could lose 100% of their earnest money. Reclosing walkthrough, I always recommend a walkthrough. The HUD recommends a day prior. Jan and I always recommend the day of because things happen at the very last minute often. Uh, lockbox may be removed, so check with the listing, neighborhood listing broker for access. We cannot give keys to the buyer. We're not allowed to do that. So invariably, we get a task again that says ready to close task. We have to go to the property, take our signs down, make sure everything looks good, and take the keys. So check with the agent either you know, if you're going to say you're going to be there at 10 o'clock for a walkthrough, I might be there at 9 o'clock or 9.30 to do a task or in the area. I'll take off the, the lock boxes. I'll leave the door unlocked. And you meet with your buyer, and it's the first thing to do is change the locks. Any issues, contact the asset manager. And again, buyers rekey their own home. I did one two weeks ago in Norwich where the agent, you know, met me there at the house with the buyer who had lock sets, you know, ready to put on the door. So... And a quick thing for FHA resource centers, you can go on their websites and get all the information that you need. And again, as we pointed out, I think I've got it as well, a slideshow for the full presentation, uh, a little bit more details in some of these parts. There's a slideshow access and JNI's information. So and at any point, like with the asset management company, are you talking to a person or is everything done through the computer? Oh, you're all doing, you're talking with a person there. Oh, we, uh, who's now, was, it used to be Diane, Diane Willis, now we have it's, uh, Natalia. Natalia. I spoke with her on my way down, Natalia. Okay. They have a couple of nice people to handle closings. And again, we work with Ofori. I don't have much contact with Cityside, but they're very nice to work with. The biggest thing is just keeping them informed what's going on. They just do not like, you know, we all know if a buyer stop or a buyer agent stops calling me or doesn't respond to my phone calls, it's never a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in touch with them, they know what's going on. That's what they want to do. They want to move the house. Um, they're not in the business of trying to take earnest money. They just want to get sold. Okay, that's what we have.